Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a double fan fold ice die. This project happens to be an apron, but you can do this on a t-shirt, a skirt, a dress, whatever your blank is. So you want to start by folding it in half if you're making an apron. If you're making a t-shirt, I recommend centering the shirt by using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. And then you want to mark out your pattern using a washable marker and then just pleat along this line, making that line as straight as possible. When making your pleats, you want to try to have them all the same height. And then once you have it all pleated up, you need to secure it. And for this project, I'm going to use kite string, but you could also use rubber bands if that's all you have. It really is just a matter of preference. How many of you are Dexter fans? I am a huge Dexter fan. I loved it back when it was on originally. So I've been watching the new season and uh, I'm not really loving it. You know, I had really high hopes for it because I love the original so much. This one is just, it's a little flat. There's not enough Dexter being Dexter. So I don't know. I have this feeling like they're going to try to, you know, get rid of Dexter and then have the son take over and be the new killer. And I'm not really a big fan of that particular character, so I don't know who's watching it. What do you guys think about the show? For the apron strings, I'm just going to roll them up like a spiral. I want to talk to you guys about something. So I was on Facebook just looking around and I came across a post in another tie-dye group and it was somebody sharing an Instagram account where this particular individual is taking other people's work and claiming it as his own and trying to sell it. And I recognized some of those photos from a guy that was posting in my Facebook group, the one that I'm telling you guys to join. And I hope nobody tried to buy anything from him. So I reached out and contacted the person and it was uh, very obvious that it was a scam. So I immediately have removed that guy and I have um, blocked him from being in the group. But I just wanna let you guys know, it's buyer beware and I don't want the group to be about selling and I've posted that and I've mentioned it, but I'm not affiliated with selling other people's tie dye or anything like that. So really make sure that if you're buying tie dye from people, that you're buying it from a reputable person, uh, you know, check out their work, make sure it's them, you know, maybe go through Etsy. Um, anyways, I just found that really disturbing and I, I want you to know that I tried to take care of it and like I said, I really hope nobody got scammed by the guy. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And before you do that, you want to build yourself some type of an ice barrier. For this project, I'm using foil. I usually like to use the silicone cake molds, but they were all in use. And I do have links for everything that I use in the description box, so go ahead and check that out.
I'm adding dye to the apron string spirals just like I would on a t-shirt in little pie pieces. Once you have all your dye on your project, give it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure and then add your ice. And you want to let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. Now for this particular project, I came and I checked it after the first layer of ice melted and there was quite a bit of undissolved dye and I should have recorded that, but I added a second layer of ice and a second layer of soda ash. It's been almost 72 hours since the ice has melted, and that's okay, it went past the 48 hours. Not much is really happening past the 48 hours, and you know, the worst that's going to happen is it's just going to get dry. But it wasn't, it was still damp. So it's time for the rinse out, and you wanna start by using cold water, and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers. And then gradually increase your water up to hot, and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. And then I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles with Synthropol it takes until that washing machine water is clear. And then I do a final wash using Millsoft and that brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. I put it in the dryer and then I iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our double fan fold ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I think it turned out really pretty. I like the scalloped edges. You can really see there on the jade green. It did turn out differently than I was expecting though. The colors are all a lot lighter than I thought they would be. For instance, the bluebird. That's typically a really heavy, overpowering, dark royal blue. And here it's a really pretty sky blue. So I'm not exactly sure what happened. I treated this like I do everything. You know, I soaked it in the soda ash for probably like a day and then, you know, I dyed it like I do everything else. It must be the material. You know, this is not t-shirt material. It's 100% cotton canvas type apron material. So I don't know, but overall I'm really pleased with this. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.